This is Devil's Advocates. So, so pretty new with this. <laughs> Took a little bit of time to get this up and running, but we'll see how it goes. We should probably talk about why we wanted to do a podcast. Yeah, let's start out why. How did how did this come to be? Well, well you know, every we're gonna have a couple podcasts that you know, as we pump them out, we're gonna have to touch on things, you know, who we are and what we're doing since they're brand new. Right. And we gotta assume that people are just gonna ran- let's pick one randomly that sounds interesting to them. So if they do that, they're gonna want to hear a little bit about who we are and stuff, especially up front, because we don't really have a name out there. Right. My name's Tom. My name's Donovan, also known as D. Yeah. We're just bringing facts, uh, anything about life, everything that you're into, nerdy stuff, cool stuff, movies, games, politics, comics. A couple years ago, we decided to look into podcasting. Really? We've been talking about this for a while. Never yeah, we got were, around to yeah, it. They've been bouncing back and forth about whether or not we should be doing it, and recently... We just decided, hey, why haven't we done that? We've been talking about it, so we just decided to order some stuff. And <clears throat> got the mics together, got the set up, and now we're we're out there. And I think the real reason is, like, and probably a lot of people ask because they don't know what a podcast is, is why do a podcast, you know? I mean, I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of people listen to podcasts. They are really popular, but then there's also a lot of people who have never even... I think that we're we're coming in a little bit late in the game. Oh yeah, but on the same time, there this is early because this right. I believe is going to replace radio. I think this is. Oh, it already an, has. I mean, yeah, it already has. I mean, cool thing about a podcast is it's it's a lot like YouTube in the fact that it, it's not censored. You don't have to have a ton of money. Uh, you with podcasting, you usually have a little bit more money than probably what you're doing with a YouTube video. A little more professional. In some cases, there are people doing really professional stuff on YouTube, you know, Ed Bassmaster and Jack Vale Jack and, Bale and sorry, all that. Some of our favorites there. All the good ones, Rhett and Link, those are good ones. But, um, you know, having that kind of uncensored platform to just talk about stuff in a unique way, I think we have a very unique approach to stuff sometimes, but at the same time, people can't help but recognize our stance. I think that's why we, we went with the name Devil's Advocates, too, is because it's taking that alternate approach that I think some people are not comfortable taking, you know, the one they don't want to take all the time, but it's not always uncomfortable the way we deliver it. I think sure. we, we, we make it fun. And then later you, you're like thinking about it and you're like, God, you're so right. And you know, it changes your mind and we want to bring that to other people. But it doesn't have to be about politics all the time, you know? It doesn't always have to be about news or who died and or what's another spin on it or how the government's, you know, making us see it. It's like you can have just everyday people talking about the way they see bullshit sometimes and then sometimes just how they see life. I mean, even I, I listen to NPR on a podcast. Like, I get whatever their Saturday weekend, whatever, you know, they're talking to different people. All that jazz, you can, you can get it on a podcast now. Why why would you sit around in your car and wait for somebody to play something that you want to hear when you can just go find it and play it? Because it's just like listening to tracks. It's it's not on a broadcast time schedule. A lot of people will you know post their podcast on a certain day, but it, you're not stuck to oh this is just going to revolve and just it just keeps going and plays the same five songs throughout the day right. you know or something like that or the same talk show the same weather channel you I know? get way more of my media through podcasting than anything else now I when I'm not listening to music mm-hmm. I'm listening to podcasts and yeah I think that's ultimately what got me wanting to listen to podcasting besides just having listened to you know Joey Diaz and mm-hmm. Joe Rogan what really made me want to pull the trigger on this was after I had watched a, a thing on the news. It was a Fox News at night, and it had to have been about I know, out of the 30 minutes that I had to actually spend time and watch something. It was probably half of it was filled about with some story about something that I really could have never heard. Like it would it, it's so insignificant to 
you know, everything that's going on right now. Right. And it had to do with like a kid getting in trouble in school for using his smartphone to tweet. <laughs> and it was, you know, they were getting interviews with the parents and then the bus driver and da da da. And all I can, kept thinking is, man, there are some important things that me and Dee have talked about. And it just trumps everything that they're feeding us through the media. And if I only have a half hour to spend on actually figuring out what's going on out there outside right. my little world, I mean, that's what other people are doing too. Right. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been owner of a comic book store, Geek Street Comics. It's kind of my, my, uh, my side project there, but I spent a lot of time on it. And I see some really awesome comics that this guy buys, like yes. pieces of history. Awesome stuff, especially if you're in any of the, you know, the movies that are going on right now, Batman and Spider-Man, Avengers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a America, great, it's a Iron great Man. time to be a nerd right now. Yeah, it really is. It's <laughs> like, of course, we've got our fair share of times with the comics. So I think it's not that we have, we're not snooty comic people. It's not like we're like, oh yeah, well, I I know all about. Spider-Man and all the things that he can do, and, 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 and that's that movie wasn't even really Gandalf. accurate. You know, yeah, but, we don't have that problem. Yeah. Right, but the thing is, we're we're very nerdy and very knowledgeable. We can yeah. tell you scene by scene the first three Planet of the Apes. I mean, we we have those moments that we're, but I would say we're proud of it. But well, you know, um, you at this point, you don't have to be a comic book reader or you know even know what a comic book is to like Walking Dead. There's right. Most people who watch Walking Dead, uh, you know, don't know a thing about comics. That's true. I, I think a lot of people probably still don't know that it is a comic book series, or that it, you know, what it's going for, or even anything. What they have no idea what's to come, and it's exactly. going to be awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, so many good things, and we're going to be touching on shows like that too really we want to use this as a a basis to really just get out there and talk about what we enjoy because we're hoping you know that i mean we know that there's other people that like what we like but you know we want to hear from them and we want them to reach out to us and shoot us info and you know you you tell us what you want to hear right um but until then we're gonna just talk about what we like exactly while you're doing some work maybe you can uh, listen in and enjoy i thought this was pretty interesting i was reading about podcasts when I was learning all the ins and outs and so of course I went to Wikipedia because that's where everybody Wiki. goes to learn about stuff I guess and uh, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna find the basics to something you want to know all the parts to it you go to Wikipedia because it'll tell everything that there is and uh, I thought this phrase in it, the description was pretty good it says um, as discussed by Richard Berry which is not the 1950s doo-wop singer. Uh, podcasting is both a converged medium bringing together audio, the web, and portable media player and a disruptive technology that has caused some in the radio business to reconsider some established practices and preconceptions about audiences, consumption, production, and distribution. This idea of disruptiveness is largely because no one person owns the technology. It is free to listen and create content, which departs from the traditional model of gate-kept media, they call it, which I think is kind of interesting. I don't know what that is, but I'm guessing they mean like, you know, television, which is paid media companies, and, uh, you know, Fox News, and, <laughs> you know, pretty much anybody with an agenda. And uh, it is very much a horizontal media form. Producers are consumers, and consumers become producers and engage in conversations with each other, which you see a lot on, on like, YouTube journals mm -hmm. where people will like actually video, post like replies to other people's videos with a video. Yeah. You know? I, I've browsed through those before, and it's – people are posting just their everyday thoughts kind of like this. I had but, a friend that was on Facebook, and she posted a video on one of her friends. Yeah. And it, I don't know why it was even in the feed. Which, that's a little confusing to me, but anyways, she put, she posted this video on her friend's wall. Oh, because she probably has her Facebook feed. to post on her face, or her either, it's in her YouTube settings, it says that you can post anything you post in, in YouTube on your Facebook wall. Which so, is really so I saw this video, I clicked it, and it's her 
telling her friend that, you know, oh, hey, I know you're stressed, but you're going to do great on your test. And and I'm like, wow, I'm like intruding on a private conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and she yeah. even, and the worst part though, is she acknowledges that. She says, <laughs> and I know there's probably people who are going to look at this video because I posted it on your wall and they're creeps because there's nothing. To, and I'm thinking, you just, why would you post a video of that? <laughs> well, yeah. And you go through those and yeah, some of them are kind of personal. It. You don't see it quite as often as just like people just kind of chatting and it's it's casual. Sometimes it's really boring and I'm sure we'll probably be boring at times, but that's why people play these kind of things while they're playing video games or doing some homework. And you, sure, it's uh, there's a lot out there. And with podcasting, I guess they do the same kind of response. Like, I don't know if we'll have joe rogan doing response podcast to our podcast but who knows we if you get into that kind of stuff i guess that's how it works and um i don't know how much of that we'll be doing but i'm i'd like to try it out too. and i'm we're totally committed to just this is fun for us we're yeah. having a really good time and even if we don't have listeners or the numbers that we want it's an outlet I mean, at least it's an out exactly and it's a fun outlet. yeah so we're gonna keep going and we hope that you follow us and check out what we have to say in the 70s or something like that they had this satellite dish and they were getting this static and they thought it was pigeon poop and they started scraping it off and they kept cleaning this thing and cleaning this thing and finally they realized they were picking up some signal that was just out there they were trying to see how far out in the universe they could listen and when they moved the dish they realized it changed and so they had a signal that was this radio frequency wave which was a remnant left over from when the big bang occurred and by following it outwards around us we can see and we can comprise this image and they call it the face of god but it's like the first bits of radio waves that come out of what is the big explosion so as the big bang is stacked on top of itself it's all the matter overlapping itself it's exploding out of that and out of it comes gravity, time, light, and radio waves in the different densities. The darker spots are probably denser areas. The hotter spots are probably lighter areas where matter just flew out and those formed galaxies. And I mean, we're probably in one of those lighter areas and we think we're s some hot stuff. <laughs> I was telling uh, D that I think one of my life goals would be I mean, obviously, I don't think it's it's just possible, but hey, we can we can imagine. I don't um, know, man. Where I don't know when you're soup when you're old. I mean, to the point where you know you're going to be dead. You don't, don't have very much time left. Like, there really isn't a better way to die than to do it in space. And what I mean by that <laughs> is having enough money to pay NASA to just. <laughs> Shoot you into space. Or some underground private company that has a, a space shuttle program. Now, so bear with me. Someone bear from with Russia. Me. You get shot into space, all right? <laughs> and you just, you, you have the momentum, and you're just going to keep going. Now, you're going to die. You probably only have, like, a year left, let's just say. Right. Doctors already told you. You know, we just, you know this for sure. You're an old man. You really got nothing to live for, you know? Um, I mean, you're by yourself at that point, you know? Like, we're talking... Right. You know, you you got you're just kind of waiting at this point to just pass. This which is, is not your a bad ship thing. It's reality. You're setting sail. Yeah. So why not set sail for something and have it be something that's you know people would die for? Yeah, if 
If ancient people could do that, they probably would have. There would be rituals. Just shoot sending me into people space, space, and I'll float into space until I die. Yeah. Can you imagine the things you'd see? <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it depends on how fast you get sent out, but even just at modern times, you could Take a propeller possibly... that's a solar power propeller. <laughs> And you're hold on to it. It's hooked to your bag. Now you have a way to navigate through space. You have a few physics problems. <laughs> but, yeah. A um, whole lot of helium-filled balloons. <laughs> when they make electromagnetic propulsion, you can use solar panels to do that. And that'll probably be possible but anyways, in the next hundred years. But it'd just be cool. I just want to see what's up there. Yeah, well, and, you know, it'd be like a last resort. If you, even if you just one at the speeds we can go right now you could probably get to like if you had a year left and you you were on life support or whatever and they just stuck you at a window and you just kind of sat there like you could probably see quite a bit and possibly mars you might even be able to go farther like i think depending it only on what's, takes what's the next planet in a line? couple of months <laughs> to get to mars uh, a few months yeah, i think it's like, like six it's... months so this is all in light of the mars landing Right. That's really what sparked this whole conversation up from the beginning. Yeah. So tell me about the the landing or it's well, it's the how much of this part. is really this is true because it just sounds ridiculous. As soon as I called D to tell him about this because I had just read it in Geek Magazine, he's he's like, oh, okay, you know, I'm really excited about it. But I had to when, go look it when up. describing the landing, it was almost as if he was in disbelief. Right. Because it sounds so cartoonish. They're and like, it's real. That it's like it's yo-yo something, and it's crazy. This is the first time we've sent a vehicle this large to um, another planet and have it land and gather information planets away. Yeah, you were telling me about it, and I had to go look it up because I'm visual sometimes. And the thing is, the size of a car, it's it's not a Wally sized robot this thing is like huge i mean it's like a multi-million it's, dollar it kind of looks like a buggy but not really it looks like one of those toys you'd make like with an erector set or <laughs> some sort of uh it's like it's a, it's a toy that something. nasa would make with an erector set right <laughs> <laughs> this thing i read up on it this thing is a uh its own mini laboratory it has drilling equipment it can it can take samples that you know, we had the Mars rover or whatever. We had the other little roller guys over there. This this thing can do so much more. It's like having a team of geologists on board. It has really sensitive equipment, which I guess is why it's so elaborate to get down there. I think the coolest thing is the landing itself. Um, to get a remote control vehicle. Right to another planet and have it land safely that's the size of a car right that's amazing in itself you know you're doing that remotely from earth right um and how does it land that's the big question Th this is actually exponentially harder than what it takes to come in on earth because there's almost no atmosphere in mars so there's no drag but you were telling me about it, dude, and it freaked me out. I swear. <laughs> I went online and at first I was like, he's okay, he's embellishing a little bit. This isn't that crazy. We've landed on Mars before. But I think before, I remember watching it on television. I don't know if it was the, the, the first time we went down there and placed something or if it was this, the actual Mars rover when it landed. But it was like some sort of ball. Yeah, or something, it, it like was not nearly as exciting. Thing. The first one, it used airbags. Right, and it, then it just threw it onto the planet. Yeah. It just, bam. Bam. And yeah, then it just but they were like big metal airbags, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's this huge thing, but it was it was an airbag system. It was kind of just right. like, we're just going to throw something really, sm like, take a egg and then right. well, and cover that's it with stuff. And then this video it. shows you the atmosphere is way too thin. It's not like Earth. There's no air, so... This thing's hurling down there, and there's no drag. You still have that flame, so it's incredibly hot, like thousands of degrees. It's uh, what is that? What is it called? The thing that like the contraption um, that you you do one thing, and then it completes a ton of other things, and to achieve a mousetrap. 
Yeah, but there's like a, a term for that kind of uh, contraption. Ah, oh, whatever. Anyway, that's basically what we'll it is. It's it a mouse trap in space. <laughs> it, it's gonna be this. Okay, keeping in mind that this is a the size of a car and weighs about a ton. You described it as like an android, or not android, an uh, asteroid hitting the the planet. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. I. I when I was talking about that, I, I meant uh, there's barely any gravity there. So, I mean, this thing's just going to be hurling through space, essentially. But it's getting pulled at incredible speeds towards the side of this planet. And, you know, it's still going to have fire, but it's there's so low atmosphere. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fly down. It's going to happen pretty quick. Right. And they're deploying a parachute, but it's... I mean, it's only going to slow them down at 200 miles an hour. This is, what is it? No, it takes 14 minutes for them to get, for us to get the signal? Or is it 7 minutes? Oh, yeah. The the time it takes for the signal to reach Earth from Mars is 14 minutes just for whatever, the frequency to travel. And it's 7 minutes from the time they hit the atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. So for an additional seven minutes after it's landed, it will have been there either in pieces or perfectly fine, and they won't know. And, yeah, so that's why they're calling it the seven minutes of terror, and you can check that out on YouTube, too. Make sure you get the updated version, otherwise you're checking out the old The Mars first stuff. landing. But, yeah, and... That's crazy. <laughs> this is, and this thing, this thing's gonna happen on its own. It's like billions of dollars, and you've just thrown <laughs> it out into space for six months, and then you're like, oh yeah, well I'm just gonna sit here while it's either, you know, in flames, <laughs> and or perfectly intact and ready Martians to bring. Martians are roasting marshmallows on it. Right for seven minutes. Probably <laughs> be a little burnt. Um, but yeah. So yeah, the first thing is the parachute, and this is a. What do they call it? A super, super supersonic supersonic parachute. parachute. It's this thing's huge. Yeah. And it's got to um, slow down this thing that weighs a ton as it's traveling at what over a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, I think it's like two thousand miles an hour or something at that point. Yeah. So this isn't gonna do much. It's gotta drop it down to two hundred. And it's it has to withstand like sixteen thousand pounds of pressure, even though the Torque, parachute yeah. only weighs a hundred pounds. That's that sounds <laughs> like this is the made cloak out of? of the gods. I know. Like, what, what is, is this that? made of? And and then it the parachute only only takes it down to two hundred miles an hour. <laughs> that's still a free, hurling. That's not even a free fall. I think you only free fall at like hundred and twenty miles an hour <laughs> in Earth's atmosphere, and that's and without a parachute. Yeah, and this doesn't have an atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, well that and that's why there's no oxygen. There's no friction on the parachute, so they're it's plummeting towards this rock and the, this huge parachute it looks like a huge hot air balloon it's, it's so oh, big it's giant and it's not even it's barely even touching the speed so then at 200 miles an hour this thing pulls out it's like jet pack yeah for it's like it a looks... disc of rockets that kind of just hovers above it like yeah. one of those four propeller things that you can control with your iphone now it's exactly. Like, it like it's got to use some of the same kind of like balancing software, and they say it's five hundred thousand lines of code or something like that. It's craziness. So it's gonna be it's gonna have these jets that kick in so that it actually suspends it off the ground. Right. This whole contraption. But then because of that, it's now going slower than the parachute that it has to let go of, because the parachute's <laughs> dropping now faster because of the lack of atmosphere. In order to not get tangled up in the parachute, it has to do this dip and swoop and fly over to the side mm -hmm. and go way out of the way and go near the landing zone that it mapped out earlier. So it's actually plummeting away from the landing zone just so it can do this. And then it's got this... And then it just thing. gets like roped down while it's in midair with jets. Yeah, it just drops the actual rover out of the jets. It, it seems... So preposterous, but it's so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have really smart people they, working yeah, on this. Yeah, they put thing. a lot of money into this, and that's why, like, this is the first video where they've had really 
good video editing because it is such a digital age now. You look at the old one, you can tell it's not the same. Like they don't have the cool little cartoons and graphics and background stuff and the and the music, which is really just Pro Tools. And it's like a Photoshop music. <laughs> I think I recognize it. I played with that <laughs> stuff before. It, but it's at least more than what they did before, it's, which was like uh, a four megapixel video <laughs> webcam, and then just like a couple of because they're, they're just a, nerds. They were using a Game Boy Pocket as yeah. its navigation. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're just nerds, and but they're not the like cool nerds. I mean, these people probably went to like private schools, like DigiPen that we got here in Redmond. They're like getting patents, lots of patents for just lines of code. Which seems ridiculous, but that's what these guys do. And so you see them on there, they still kind of look out of place with all this, like, really nice background and, like, they've got these graphics going and stuff and their name comes up all fancy <laughs> on the screen and you're like, these guys are in a different world now. It's great. It's amazing. It seems impossible. Yeah. And it's really important that everyone you know, at least knows that this happened. Hey, you one, know? one small step, right? This is a huge step. We're yeah, putting a freaking BMW. Leap. No, not even a BMW, a Ferrari <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> like at least a Ferrari. Uh, no, it's a it's a like uh, ten Ferraris uh, packed together. Yeah. Really how really much does it cost? A billion dollars? I'm guessing the reason why they're using such a delicate and elaborate landing is because they say that the equipment's pretty delicate on this thing. I mean, it's got high-grade equipment. And not not that long ago, Mars probably was the first Earth. I mean, it's the, nearly the same size, nearly the same gravity. And when the sun was bigger, life would have formed before Earth on Mars because there's what? three hot spots in our solar system where they think there could be life. That's huge. We've only had technology to even do a... I mean, podcasting is brand new. Yeah. Let alone sending things into the far well, end of space. It's not that brand new, but it's within the last decade. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we're talking... Literally, 2004. So, yeah. I mean, the rate technology goes is pretty, pretty fast. I was telling you before, 100 years, the movie industry has been around. And the video game industry in 30 years has made a multiplier higher in profits. It's, that's just the way that technology goes. It's always faster. It's always better. And that's, that's kind of what my point was with these nerds in there getting this fame. I think people are going to start pushing this direction. It's a big thing. You see a lot of movies where they There's used to be sci-fi now they're their own genre of like it's like space film is like its own thing now kind of well we're talking about this on our podcast right now yeah look at the kind of i mean this I mean, is huge i mean we're we're trying to attract people to our podcast by telling them about something this cool yeah it's, that puts in perspective what the potential is for profits to be made from our exploration of of life oh, and yeah. in, in the universe. If I could go anywhere, I mean, I probably wouldn't want to go to the moon. That'd probably be the one place where I'd be like, that's a waste of resources to go to. It's a small little satellite. It has a purpose, but it was never to support life in any way. It's a rock. It's to help with our life, but mm -hmm. that's it. But any other planet, even Mars, I would freaking take a trip to Mars. That would probably be it. You know, like you were saying, at the end of your life. But, I mean, Prometheus? <laughs> Come on. That's all I keep thinking. I know. Yes. it's You can't, especially <laughs> if you've seen that movie recently. So, you know, you just probably just lost half your viewers. Because apparently no. no one likes this movie. No way. Are you kidding me? Nobody Every, likes Prometheus. No one likes it. Um, I was surprised. Joe Rogan didn't like it. What? I don't understand it. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that when you ask someone, did you like Prometheus, they, they say either, yeah, it was okay, didn't really care for it, I didn't really like the story, 
Really? Or they just straight up say, I don't like it. And then you do a follow-up question. When was the last time you watched Alien? Yeah. And they go, oh, it's been about 10 years. Right. We watched Alien after. right after Prometheus. Yeah. And I probably had seen it a little bit more recently than you had, but... You know, just late at night when it's playing. Mm-hmm. And, dude, that's a great movie. <laughs> to, even today's standard. What what year did that come out? I mean, it came out okay. Prometheus is pre- oh, pretty remember. much the same movie. It, it, <laughs> let's, n- let's not lie. But you've got so much to touch on. If you've ever seen Ancient Aliens... If you've ever studied anything or believe in life out there or anything, this is an interesting take. If you believe that we've been influenced by other beings, because a lot of people will tell you, like, there's a variety of species on this planet, but humans are kind of weird out of all of them. And there's a lot of ancient races that think that we've been changed and that we've been affected by outsiders and stuff and if you believe that at all prometheus has huge questions like it talks about stuff that we know artifacts we've found things that we've discovered and then and then also concepts that are very possible even though they're totally you know they're they're made up stories right they have a there's no way to prove that it it's, it's not possible right and did something like that happen the only way we could know that the only way we could ever figure that out is if we went into space and found it because we can travel we know we can go far away I mean planet of the apes you learn your first lesson about time and space and how you travel you can move near the speed of light and you don't age. You don't, at least not nearly as much as the other people do. So you can travel for 800 years going at the speed of light. You've still gone, you know, 800 light years away, but you're 10 years older. And then you you throw cryogenic sleep into the mix, <laughs> and you got you got 50 years you can throw right. in there, or whatever. Who knows where the technology will go? And so we could go land on planets that are 800 light years away. It's 800 years before we would be able to see the light that's coming off of them. If I left this planet now and I traveled away from Earth at near the speed of light, and let's just say we go with the Planet of the Apes calculations, 800 years from now I'd have hit that planet. But that's 800 light years away. That's how long it takes light to get here. So 800 years before the light that's showing me on that planet still has to go by after I get there. Before (laughs) we would be able to see, looking on that planet, what's happening. That's how far you are. Yeah. And we can see light from planets so far away that there's n- it's m- millions I know at least millions of years in the past that we can look by doing this so how far could we go if we just keep using that just it's crazy that's what I want to do someday <laughs> and yet some people didn't like for me <laughs> yeah it's like that's that's the whole idea yeah this and that's is, a- this and throw creation also in the mix. Well, and in Prometheus, the only stretch is somebody else did it before us. Ooh. You know? <laughs> Come on. There's a good chance that's probably possible. I think it's Stephen Hawking's and then Life on Other Planets or something like that. But it's on... I just watched it on Netflix. And he's, okay. he's basically using probability to explain what life would be on other planets and right then actually saying and if this is the case if we are even in the realm of being correct this is what would have to be evolution is a universal thing 
Right. It all we all came from the same place. Right. So that planet would have to follow the same evolutional pattern. So this is how right. those creatures yeah. would have to be. And, and they pretty... actually they show you a wor the world and they they uh, actually you know he's he's reading. This is all Stephen Hawking's mouth. Right. And they just actually design it well, and actually show you It's ideas. from his computer. Yeah, well, that's true. But he's blowing the, the thing. It works. Yeah. He's moving his lip to initiate pre-recorded, typed-out messages, which he made with that same process. He's actually got seven minutes or ten minutes of video or something like that. I think it was ten minutes of actual information and they asked him a question at the end and it took him seven minutes to put out one sentence that and and then he just initiated it by lifting his lip and then he just read it for him which is crazy <laughs> crazy yeah but that's all he does that's, i mean he's, he even says he's dedicated his life to it um and that's the kind of stuff we talk about <laughs> we just uh Get nerdy sometimes. None of this would be possible without our sponsors, Geek Street Comics and Aventech. Check out Geek Street Comics eBay store at stores.ebay.com forward slash Geek Street Comics. Check out their key comic books and grab bags. And also, thank you to Aventech for putting together the website, making all the tech aspects of this show possible. You can also check out our website at devilsadvocates.tv. Download all our podcasts and shows and any links or information. The song that we used on our episode today was called Superpowers, and it's by a band called Ookla the Mock. Check them out on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs>